So guys, the first step has to do with the quick settings. Now you've got your entire grid here of all the settings. Now you don't have to go inside your settings to access these individually. You could just tap on the name of that setting and it will open up the details right in front of you. So if you tap on Wi-Fi, it will open up the list of entire, you know, the wireless networks around you. If you click on the Bluetooth setting, um, it'll just open up that particular setting. You know, similarly for, let's say, uh, yeah, power saving modes, you can access them right up front. Or even your blue light filter, you could change the opacity uh, of, you know, the strength of your blue light. And the best one is, in fact, the flashlight. I don't know how many of you knew this, but if you tap on flashlight, the word, you can also increase or decrease the strength of the light. Next thing is you can pin reminders onto your always on display. And I think it's a very less used feature and it's amazing because it's right there in front of you always. So when your screen is locked, take out your S Pen, note down your reminder, whatever you want to be, you know, upfront visible and hit the pin reminder and then tap on pin to always on display and it'll always be there on your as your always on display reminder. That's so cool. And you can always, you know, reduce it, uh, minimize it, expand it. And once you're done, you can just, you know, double tap on the cross sign and it will be deleted. Coming to the third one is that you can record calls on your Galaxy Note 9. So if you go into your dialer hit settings, you will see an option to record calls, the third one right over there. Now you can record calls from whoever you get calls from. So there's an all numbers option. You could only record for unsaved numbers, so you know, unknown numbers, or you could only record for selected numbers. But if you still want to record on the go while you're on the call, you can just hit that uh, menu on the top right and then hit record. Whenever you're done, it's gonna give you a notification that the call was recorded into your internal storage. Third, let's say that you're scrolling through a feed of stuff, you know, it could be articles, pictures, anything on your screen that you like and you want to share. Take the S Pen out, hit the command menu and then choose smart select. You can just drag around a box around whatever you want to share. And this saves you the whole process of, you know, taking a screenshot, cropping it, editing it, just not required. Hit the share button, choose whoever you want to send it to and you're done. The next one in the list is to set up the Dolby Atmos feature. Now I can't stress upon this enough and I can't talk about this enough either, but this mode, truly changes the way you experience sound and especially video. I mean, it's truly cinematic. Uh, just plug in your earphones and just turn on Dolby Atmos when you're watching Netflix or any YouTube video. Keep turning it on and off and you'll know the difference I'm talking about. It's, it's mind blowing. Now, one thing that has been very annoying about Samsung phones is that their interface seems slower. That's because their screen animations and those transitions are actually pretty slow. That's the one thing about OnePlus that I really love. Oxygen OS, it just feels faster because, you know, the animations are faster. Although both these phones have the same processor. Now with Samsung One UI update, you can actually do that in a single tap. So if you go into advanced features, there's an option to reduce animation. It's turned off by default, just turn it on and you're all set. The always on display is an amazing feature on the Note 9 and other flagship phones. I mean, I totally love it, but it is also a battery monger. But with Samsung One UI update, there's a key feature that has been introduced. Of course, you can still schedule it to go on and off to save battery. But the good one really is tap to uh, show. That's really brilliant because that's actually what you really need. So one tap, and it shows you whether you have notifications or what the time is, your calendar, whatever it is. Also, you can double tap on the time to manually change the brightness if required. The next one has to do with how you unlock your Note 9. And I personally prefer a combination screen lock type of fingerprint, intelligent scan and pin. Now, this is the probably the fastest way and the most flexible way to unlock your Note 9. So you get the option to either use the fingerprint sensor to unlock your uh, phone or you could just use, you know, your password or a combination of your iris and face scan to unlock the device. And lastly, you have a lot of control over how your notifications show up on the lock screen. So first of all, you can change it, uh, you know, to look very brief or you could actually just go ahead and change it to be very detailed. So you can see a part of the message or a part of a reply or a part of email to show up. Or you could just be icons, you know, like you have on the always on display now but I prefer brief, it's not too much, it's not too less. 
Also, you could hide content. So if you have, you know, eyes prying around you, you could protect from that, from those as well. Uh, you can, of course, set the transparency. Now, having the transparency all the way to high, it looks pretty cool. But, you know, the readability comes into question because your wallpaper might be too busy. So there you go, guys. Those were some pro tips for the Galaxy Note 9. A lot of stuff from the new One UI update. And if you have any that, you know, you think I haven't shared as of now, uh, feel free to comment them in the section below.